Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Jordan's Publishing in Bristol, now part of Lex's Nexus. Jordan's, in collaboration with APIL, that's the Association of Personal Injury Lawyers, produce a whole series of guides for us in personal injury work. And this particular book is of very great importance. It's this one here, it's the Guide to MIB Claims, that's Motor Insurance Bureau Claims. It's covering uninsured and untraced drivers. The book's been around a long time, it's now in a fourth edition and it's been written by Andrew Ritchie and Jeremy Ford, Andrew Ritchie, Queen's Counsel, and Jeremy Ford. It's also available as an e-book. We'll have a look at the book in a moment. Um, these books are very important, I think, to anybody who does PI work as I do, both trial work and advice work, because it really does assist in giving you an idea exactly what you need to do in these types of proceedings. Now Elizabeth and I talked about a title for our book review for this work and we've given it the title Immediate Practical Advice of the Highest Quality from APIL and Jordans on MIB Claims. Now let's have a look at the book. It's a paperback and there's the front. You can see there's the spine and then there's the back. A little bit of blurb on the back explaining what the book's actually all about. Now it runs to 500 odd pages, um, there's a shortish index which you can see there and the index is actually in, by paragraph numbering which is actually quite easy, it makes it quite easy to find things. There are some uh, interesting um, appendices at the back, one is the case of Andrews versus the MIB which is very important. You've also got uh, a whole range of other things which I'll show you, that's the actual case itself there. You've also got uh, important information concerning directives and then you've got uh, various other certainly further information concerning directives. Then you get into the main, you've got of course the uh, legislation, then you get into the main book itself which are the various uh, headings this is in fact dealing with the uninsured driver's agreement and guidance notes. Let me go to the front of the book and show you what that has. You've got some idea. There is the front page. Mentioning the two authors from Nine Goth Square. There's the dedication which I always like to show. See who it's dedicated to by the authors. Then this tells you a little bit about the authors and a little bit about the um, forward to the first edition when it, the reason why they started writing this book in the first place and it's been very successful ever since it first came out. There's a preface which covers what's in the current edition which sets out now quite a lot of the important things that have taken place since the beginning of the year and then um, the Association of Personal Injury Lawyers, a little bit of blurb about them. The actual preface itself is dated January so the law effectively is up up to about January 2016 um, and obviously I'm recording this a bit later in the year. There's the contents section there, you see how it's structured, paragraph numbering and then after the various chapters, you can see the various chapters there, you then have a large number of appendices and we started off with those with the various agreements that you've got, the uninsured drivers agreements 1999 2015 with guidance notes and so forth. So what you've got is the book is basically split into the two parts. One is the, uh, I'll show you where it actually starts. It's uh, it's quite, quite a substantial amount for the appendices. So you can see that the first part of the book, that bit is the book itself and that's, that bit is all the appendices including the various agreements which could well be quite relevant for your own particular case. As I say, you can see from this that you do have some footnoting, not too much, and you do of course have the paragraph numbering to find things pretty quickly. It's a very good book and I'm very pleased to be able to review the new edition. This is what we say anyway. There can be no doubt that the collaboration between the Association of Personal Injury Lawyers, APIL, and Jordan Publishing has been of massive benefit to all practitioners advising and acting in proceedings for personal injury. One of the most important areas uh, covered 
in the expanding series of these A Pildor books is the work of the Motor Insurers Bureau, MIB, and the function they perform for those appalling people who drive whilst uninsured and those drivers who cannot be traced. And the bright pink cover, which you probably remember, of the third edition, and this is the fourth, has been banished. And yes, it did make it stand out, whatever they say. However, the authors have not been too conservative with a more modest night driving scene um, for this edition. And the work remains the most practical statement readily available for practitioners and is written in an easy to read style and format. And since Ritchie wrote his uh, preface, Britain's decided to leave the European Union. And of course, Ritchie makes a telling point, writing that it's ironic that at a time when our country is preparing to decide whether to leave Europe in this field of law, uh, in this field, the law is developing fairly and rationally guided by Europe. It's therefore to be hoped that we can salvage the positive nature of this field of law during the Brexit negotiations without losing the benefits already achieved. And at the moment, we are looking at quite a large number of books which have appeared, all of which have been published prior to the decision to leave the EU. So there's going to be a huge amount of change, no doubt, with new editions of lots of books coming out to see in the next few years where we're going in, which direction we're going in with specific uh, substantive law issues. And that, of course, is something that all of us as practitioners will uh, wait with bated breath to look for. Um, the authors uh, go on to point out that we've seen a growth in the Frankovich claims against the Department for Transport, and they say to resolve unfairness caused where they've been led by the MIB into agreeing such strikeout and exclusion clauses. And readers, we think, should note that these fancy claims, as they're called, have achieved their purpose and have driven the Department of Transport, and hence the MIB, to be more careful about how they seek to cut holes in the safety nets uh, which they are required to provide for injured people. And I do think that's a very important point to bear in mind because I'm sure everybody will remember from their student days what the role of MIB really is and what an important role it has because there are unfortunately a large number of people who fall into the uninsured or untraced category. <laughs> The fourth edition, this one, is now available in book format and as an e-book. Now, Andrew Ritchie QC and his uh, assistant editor, Jeremy Ford, say that the long-awaited fourth edition of this popular April Guide to MIB claims provides the practical advice that all personal injury litigators handling RTA cases need to advise clients whose claims involve Section 151 of the Road Traffic Act 1988 or the untraced and uninsured drivers, and how right they are. These cases have always been fraught with procedural difficulties, and the technical nature of agreements has increased the risks of default by claimants and solicitors. This volume clearly sets out the potential pitfalls, and that's what they've succeeded in doing brilliantly, I think, when dealing with MIB claims themselves. It offers practical guidance to ensure that clients' cases are handled effectively, and again, that's a very important point from the perspective of the client. This edition, of course, has been revised and expanded to include coverage, and I'm going to list what's in this. It's on the back of the book, but it's the Uninsured Drivers Agreement 2015, which is in one of the appendices, later supplements to the uh, Untraced Drivers Agreement of 2003, the Sixth Motor Insurance Directive, recent case law, uh, such as Delaney and Secretary of State for Transport, and Andrews and MIB, Andrews being a big one for this particular book, John Clark and Phoebe Clark and the MIB, and Churchill and Wilkins, uh, Wilkinson, and of course the Frankovich claims themselves. So there's quite a lot of case law here, should you start having to think about either an opinion or any particular submissions you want to make in court. Let me conclude by saying additionally the accompanying appendices include all relevant statutory materials both UK and European and MIB documentation as well as the author's own draft particulars of claim which I think is of sort of great help. In all then this is another first class exposition of how to pursue such claims 
and an excellent required uh, necessity for your personal injury law library as there's nothing better in my view on the market at this price for the quality and the practical detail which you get and I'm very grateful to have had this over the last 20 or so years doing PI claims. The publication date is cited actually at March 2016 but the, the uh, forward was written in the January. There's the front of it again, spine and then there's a bit on the back saying what's new and I've mentioned the basics there. Let's just open it in the middle. We, we're actually getting, these are still the, uh, this is actually the uh, body copy if you like of the um, the actual publication this is liability MIB's liability it's structured there you see this is chapter 7 and then you've got some footnoting and you've got quite a lot of other information chapter 6 the insurers liability under the Road Traffic Act uh, uh, section 151 and so on so it's very very specific the passengers liability always of interest as well of course chapter 3 and so on Anyway, I'd like to thank both Andrew Ritchie and Jeremy Ford very much indeed for this book and to all the people involved. It does make our lives a great deal easier when we have this sort of information uh, readily available. So thank you. Bye-bye.